Welcome, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme one, element nine, Longshore Drift. Check that uniform. I'm Mr. Ress and I'll be your five minute teacher. We've looked at the four river processes, but material along the coast is moved in a different way. We call this Longshore Drift. So let's have a look to start with at what that theory actually looks like. So we have a diagram here that represents longshore drift and it's got quite a few different things going on. We've got quite a few different arrows. So we're going to try and step by step this by looking at each individual section on its own. So let's start off with the prevailing wind and the swash. So the prevailing wind, which is represented by this big arrow in the south of the diagram, represents the general direction that the wind is blowing in at that point on the coast. Now wind direction can change day to day, but the prevailing wind is the dominant, the main wind direction that occurs along the coastline. And that's important because this wind direction is actually going to influence where and how the waves move up the coast or onto the beach. So you can see here the swash. So the swash is the motion of the wave moving up the beach. So the swash is influenced by the prevailing wind direction. It moves in the same way up the beach as the wind is blowing. So any material that's in the sea at this point is going to be moved up onto the beach along with the swash and deposited when the wave loses its energy. When another wave comes in, or it could be the same wave, decides to come back out again, so it's been drawn back into the sea, it's not following the wind direction this time, it's not being blown back down the same direction or at the opposing angle, it's coming down at a right angle to the coast. And the reason for that is that gravity is influencing water more now. So it's going to be pulled back down by gravity, which is going to pull it straight down, which is at a right angle to the coast. So any material that's picked up by the wave, which is called the backwash when it moves back into the sea, is going to get dragged back down into the sea. And that process continues in a zigzag pattern all the way down the coast. Now, it's a continuous cycle and it goes in the direction of longshore drift, which is influenced again by the prevailing wind direction. Now, longshore drift can't happen towards the northeast because the coast doesn't run that way, but it's the most dominant direction to move it along this side of the coast as opposed to that side of the coast. Right, so that's it in a nutshell, but let's take this by even uh, smaller steps. Let's go step by step in following a particle, a small bit of pebble. So here's our prevailing wind direction. So the wind's blowing towards the northeast on our diagram. And here's the pebble that we're going to track. So the wave moves up the beach, which is called the swash. And it's going to deposit that pebble on the beach. Now another wave comes down and then moves back off the beach, which is called the backwash. And it's going to take that pebble back into the sea. And again, this is going to happen over and over again. So what we're finding is on this bit of coastline, material from the west of the beach is being moved down the beach to the east. Now this causes some problems depending on where you are in, in the UK, because you might have a lot of material being moved from this area and move further away or into a different location. So you might actually lose your beach because of longshore drift and another place might gain it. So we're going to look at this in a different lesson, but you may have seen little fences that run down the side of the beach, uh, parallel, sorry, at right angles to the beach. So if you put a fence here, which are called groins, along here, it stops this particle from moving any further down the beach to try and preserve some of the beach from longshore drift. So around the UK, Longshore drift happens roughly in a clockwise direction. So on the west coast, all the uh, material, all the longshore drift is moved up to the north. And then on the east coast, it moves down to the south. There is an anomaly a bit here along the south coast where it's moving towards the east as opposed to moving towards the west. But let's say you're here down in the southwest, you're going to be more at risk of losing all your beach because all of that sediment is moving up the coast here and moving away down the coast over here. Well, that's it for today. But continue your revision by completing the Now Try Tasks for Homework. Class dismissed.